So moving on from that, I want to introduce you to Antonin Ford. I call him Antonin, which is Irish for Antoine. He's from France, so I'm sure I'm not pronouncing it correctly. That's all right. Um, <laughs> Antonin completed his undergraduate degree and master's with a focus on plant science in France. He then moved to the beautiful Ireland um, in Galway here and did his PhD in NUI Galway with, and since then has a focus on seaweed. So, Anta has a passion um, for the seaweed industry and believes the knowledge that he has within the university or the research sector should be applied within the private industry. Um, he co-founded a company, Pristine Coast Limited, that provides genomic solutions to seaweed identification and traceability of seaweed products. So Anta, would you like to come on, share your screen Indeed. and talk a little bit about what you're doing in the context of SW Grow and any information on, I suppose, looking at the strain selection for seaweed. Yep. Perfect. So Ashton has a bad Is internet connection. Yeah, uh, just, there we go. He's a bad internet connection, so he might have to turn off his camera soon. Yep. So just have a quick look at him and then uh, <laughs> he might have to turn off his camera. Work away, Anthony. You saw me, the introductions are done, so we can we can move on and turn that off. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kiona, for, for the introduction. So yeah, the I think the, the main thing I want to I want to say is that I'm primarily a, a plant scientist. I did most of my research, early research on plants. So the seaweed industry is, is fairly new to me. I mean, I just started what three years ago now. Uh, so I'm sure loads of you know more about seaweeds than I do, but I believe that we Having a, that plant background actually helps to bring a new focus to, uh, to the seaweed industry. Um, and as part of uh, our research project, um, what, we want, what we focused on was to see whether we could start a strain selection program uh, on seaweeds, pre predominantly ulva, to try to improve yield in, in, in aquaculture systems. So I probably don't have to, to tell you that, but obviously the seaweed industry is expanding massively for the past 20, 30 years or so. Um, and particularly um, the aquaculture industry. Um, so all the aquaculture systems that, that produce seaweeds commercially. Um, sadly, most of, that, uh, most of that expansion of the, of the industries um, is so far done in Asia. So we hope through all those various research projects, let it be SW Grow here or the Genial project in which I was part of uh, in the last few years, try to really just help to, from a, an academic perspective, to try to help developing the seaweed industry in Ireland, but also just in Europe, in Europe in general. Um, so the, the main question really that we, that we had was, um, how can we improve yields in, in an aquaculture system? And the answer lies really in, uh, in what we've done, I suppose, in the last 10,000 years uh, when, we, when human, uh, humans started to develop uh, agriculture. So it's effectively the exact same principle. We want to grow a crop um, in, in the natural environment, but in a farmed environment. And thanks to the emergence of ag agriculture, we effectively boosted massively the, um, the yield per acre of land for, since 10,000 BCs to nowadays. But what I want to focus on is really that sharp peak there that we have in the last 70 to 80 years or so, where we started to develop uh, better farming techniques. Uh, but that's not something that we are focusing on per, um, in, in the lab ourselves, because we let farming to, to actual farmers, because we, we, we're only lab-based at the moment, so we, we can only focus on what we can do. And I think what we, the, the, the second aspect that we focus on is the selection and the amplification of specific individuals, of varieties, of strains, whichever way you want to call them. I know there's loads of different uh, definitions for all those, th all those things, but I tend to call them strains. It might be wrong, but I, I call them strains for, for simplicity's sake. But the idea is that that sharp increase in yields that we've seen in the last uh, 70 years is in large part due to the creation of new elite varieties, elite crop varieties, but now we hope elite uh, seaweed varieties for, for aquaculture. And the basic premise of that uh, is my, oh, yeah. The basic premise of that is that um, the growth or the yield, when I mean yield, it can be anything from um, the, the, the production of a particular metabolite or a compound that is of high value. 
that has a yield that we can measure. But the idea is that each individual is unique. We are our, our our genetic material makes us unique, and it's the same for plants and it's the same for seaweed. So if you if you were to um, sort of different wheat varieties in a field like you have in the top left corner, um, each of those variety has a unique genetic makeup, a unique blend of genetic information that makes it express different characteristics. It might make it grow faster or might, might uh, make it produce more grains, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so the idea here is that selecting individual strains or varieties that have a good performance in a given uh, farming system should drastically increase yield. Uh, and that's what we that's what we focused on in our research in the last few years. And that's that's a message I'm hoping to to be able to convey to you today. And in plants, all of that is done for is done is done very efficiently. But in seaweed outside of Asia, in Europe, um, while the industry is, is, is booming and is developing rapidly, the strains or the, the seaweed that are grown in the various uh, farming systems have not been selected for high growth yet. And the growth of seaweed itself is still a fairly poorly uh, understood phenomenon. And what we focus in the lab ourselves is to see whether there is enough genetic variation within individuals to affect growth and whether we can select specific trains, uh, strains of seaweeds uh, that have higher yields. Um, and ensuring having higher yield and reliably higher yield uh, will, is require, uh, does require the selection of strain varieties. So that's what we've started developing for ULVA, where we've created a fast and efficient strain selection method that allows us to screen hundreds of strains and assess their growth and biochemical properties. And we also developed a method to safeguard the best performing strains um, to allow farmers to reuse their selected strains year on year. So in terms of our project, we've, um, we, we and our partners have collected about 250 individual uh, ULVA samples from throughout Europe that represents seven ULVA species. And at face value, what's interesting is that if you look at different ULVA, they all look the same, right? There's very little difference between them. So if you just look at them, there's no way to predict or to, to assess whether they will grow fast or for example, produce and uh, accumulate loads of proteins. So we've come up with a system um, uh, in the lab to measure the growth and at the end of the growth period to measure biochemical characteristics of hundreds of uh, ulva strains in order to see whether they are different, whether different strains have different yields or don't worry too much about the system because um, that's obviously not something that every hatchery could do, but it's just one of the ways you can start strain selection in, in your seaweed of interest. So we'll go through, we, we won't go through that, it's, uh, it's just details. But the meat of the matter is um, that when we grew all those different individuals under the same growth conditions, we observed massive difference in growth, which is what you see here. There's 250 individuals on that, um, on that graph, and there's about five-fold difference in growth rates between the slowest growing individual and the fastest growing individual in our particular um, environmental and um, the best performing individuals in terms of growth grew above 30%, um, accumulated more than 30% of biomass per day. So effectively, what it means is that if we select those strains and we are farming, and look if, and when we talk to grow, uh, um, if, if we had taken um, seaweed uh, left, side of that you would have had very poor yield. So effectively, having that pre-selection uh, system allows us to select performing strains that are going to produce the biomass um, for, for a particular set of environmental conditions. And what's interesting is that that large variation isn't only for growth, but it's also on pretty much every biochemical characteristics that we've measured. Here is an example of a graph that we obtained for proteins where we have about four times different, uh, fourfold difference between the protein uh, content of uh, the best or the 
and we found a similar range of difference for carbohydrate, pigments, nitrate accumulation, all those characteristics that we measured. So again, it means that if you're interested as a farmer to um, have a biomass high in protein content, which is often the case um, uh, for, for the use of the seaweed, it means that uh, there is definitely an interest and an advantage to do selection beforehand, before growing full scale, to select the most promising individuals in terms of protein accumulation. So here's our best one had above 20% of the biomass that was um, that was proteins. So obviously selecting those individuals for the farming system is expected, is expected to boost the, the yield of um, the protein produced by the, um, by the, by the farm. Um, and also looking at individuals from loads of different areas, what we found is that in some areas, there was um, a, 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 um, a higher proportion of good individuals in specific areas, namely for ulva, it was individuals that were found in green tides. So those, all the, well, most of the individuals that were collected in green tide areas tended to have a different growth and metabolic um, in biochemical characteristics compared to individuals that were found not in green tides. So it means that um, genetically there is something in those areas that make the ulva strains from those areas likely better for an aquaculture system than um, collecting ulva strains uh, from different uh, different locations. Um, and the idea here really is that this is a very simple um, process. Strain selection is literally just looking at a population of individuals and um, selecting the best one to use for your farming system. And it can be done on ulva, but it can also be done on kelp. And we had started to do some trials with our uh, system in the lab to measure the growth of kelp using the cameras and then to effectively select kelp sporophytes, here it's Saccharina latissima, that have uh, high growth um, characteristics, for example. So as a, as a farmer how, or as someone that has a hatchery, how do we deploy such methodology? So the idea is to start before large-scale cultivation, but you can also do it during large-scale scale cultivation. The idea is going to be to measure the growth or any other characteristics that is of interest to you as a farmer. Um, so you, me you measure that from a population of individuals from your local area. The test conditions, that's very important, should as closely as possible ref uh, reflect the real world condition of your aquaculture site. Because a selection method, like I mentioned there, is only valid for a given set of environmental conditions. Obviously, if I was growing the same set of, of 250 strains of ulva in different environmental conditions, let's say if I was going to increase the temperature, we, were, we are likely to see a different ranking of the strains in terms of their growth rate. Because genetically, because all the strains are different, they are going to respond differently to environmental conditions. So your test condition should be as closely as possible related to the conditions of your aquaculture site. No, you don't need to use fancy equipment. Um, you can just use your own farm, farming system for, for strain selection. And I'll show you an example just afterwards. The idea is that at the end of the growing season, you're going to select the most promising individuals. And instead of putting them in the rest of your biomass to, to sell your biomass, just try to reuse those individuals or the offspring of those individuals for your next growing season. And effectively, that's the beginning of your strain selection process. And you do that year on year. So let's say if you were going to use uh, Carina as an example, um, what we've done in a seaweed farm in, in, in County Kerry is that we've used the local population um, to, to seed our, on, our, on, our, um, on our seaweed farm. And then towards the end of the season, you, you will collect um, a subset of the individuals uh, that were growing on your lines, and you're going to select the ones that are the most promising to you. Here, we selected the ones that were big, for example, because big means uh, likely higher yield. And once again, instead of um, throwing it with the rest of the biomass, bring back those individuals uh, back in the hatchery, induce reproduction, and use the offspring of that particular individual as your seeding material for the next year cultivation. And effectively, it means that you're likely to have a, a, a population of individual on your seaweed farm next uh, in the in year two that is going to have uh, better growth characteristics than your wild population. 
because you have selected high performing individuals in um, to as as your seeding material for the next year and effectively just keep doing that year on year, reuse the same material year on year and keep selecting the best individual and the best offspring from that original uh, parent year on year. And if eventually what you'll find, and it's what we found in, in land, land plants in crops, is that over time you're going to fix, it, uh, fix the genetic um, diversity of your population and you're going to fix all the alleles, all the, the good genes that make your individual grow fast. So effectively, your 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 farm population is going to become more uniform, and hopefully higher yielding because you you you've kept selecting for high yield. So it's very simple. the The idea really is just not to not to throw away the biomass uh, of year one or to sell the biomass of year one. It's just to to select the good individuals from that year one cultivation and to use those for year two and to keep doing that year on year. Um, and you don't even have to induce uh, reproduction and to, to use the offspring in case of ulva or indeed in case of um, some red, um, red algae. Uh, you can maintain your selected best performing individuals in vegetative growth in the lab or in the hatchery and effectively keep reusing the same biomass from those individuals um, year on year. The methodology is exactly the same, but you don't need to induce reproduction and to go through that uh, painstaking process of, um, of uh, generating offspring. It's much easier to work on those types of things because obviously it requires less, uh, so less handy work to, to. Yeah, yeah. I'm, Sorry I'm done. for coming I'm in done. a two minute or Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, the last thing is that you can save your strains uh, using long-term storage, such as cryopreservation, and we, we've developed a protocol for, for ULVA in that particular system. So finally, the, the, only, the last thing I want to say is that at the moment we are we are at the, the very beginning of uh, the strain selection process for seaweed and at the beginning of the breeding process for seaweed. Um, and we're expecting that starting those processes now is going to dramatically increase dramatically increase yield as, as time goes further and as we start developing proper breeding programs for seaweed. So we are right at the beginning, but I think there is, I hope I've convinced you that there is definitely a, 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 a li there's likely to be large advantages to start strain selection now and to use selected strains for the aquaculture systems. So I'll stop there because uh, I know I, I ramble a lot when I give talks of things I, I, I'm passionate about, but there you go. Uh, I'll, I'll be happy to take any questions later on if you, if you Perfect. have. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much um, for that, Anthony. There's two questions in particular pertaining to uh, strain selection there that we will deal with.